Well, I feel like we have a lot of potential this year. Um, we have a lot of great seniors, uh, Ethan Stewart, uh, Michael O'Brien, and Damian uh, Gudikens are just some of the few seniors. Uh, so there's just few of the seniors that we have that are really big leaders of the team. So it's great to, uh, to see them out here and then perform well and uh, pick up others as well. Tell me about this offense because um, obviously Peyton Wall was a big big part of what you guys did. Um, but, you know, you have building blocks in yourself. Jackson's got a year of experience yeah. under his belt at QB. And you have, you know, a, a handful of uh, guys that could run the football for you guys. How do you characterize this offense? What sticks out to you about this offense? Um, we have a lot of great running backs. Uh, Payne Wall was a hell, or a great player, but um, but I feel like we have a lot of people who have uh, really came up and uh, have performed well lately, and so I've been really proud to see that. And our office line has done, and uh, that bond has been amazing. So uh, hopefully we can just continue to grow that and uh, see who else pops up. How much do you put it on yourself and put it on this offensive line group to set the tone for what you guys do offensively, knowing that, yeah, you, you lost one of the best players in Northeast Indiana? Um, yeah, uh, obviously the offensive line is a big part of this offense, so it's always good to have a good offensive line and to have a good chemistry between the offensive linemen. And so, uh, so far, I've seen that, and uh, I just can, can't wait to continue to grow that bond with all of them. Who are some of the guys that have stepped into the running back position and are hoping to, to fill that void for this Leo team? What do you like about them? Uh, just three um, out of many would be uh, Mason Sharon, Caden Miller, and Max Luffer. Uh, those are just some of the guys that uh, throughout practice have really just gone out there and, and, and just gone hard every single play. So that's really caught my attention. And uh, I just can't wait for them to go out and perform this season. Um, ten and two last season. Both of those losses came to a, a rival in East Noble. So, how much does that fuel you, knowing that man, they got you once, and it was a lot closer in the playoffs, fourteen to seven. But um, that's that's kind of the bar, the next hump for you guys to get over, even though you had an impressive ten and two year. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, we wanted to see how far we could go last season, and unfortunately, uh, East Noble were state, was state runner ups. So um, that's a goal for us this year. You know, obviously, for them to go to state. Last year, you know, that's a that's a very good football team. And so I can't wait to go out there and compete and uh, see how we match up with them. Um, last season, I think, against East Noble, we just we not, we went out there with a good game plan. We just got to execute. We just didn't execute, and we got to go out there and compete and give it all we got this year. Because in my last year, I want to go out there and win and compete, really. How hungry does that make you? Because really, you only lost to one team last year. It just happened to be twice. Yeah, um, that makes me hungry even more. Like I would just want to go out there and just show them what we have, and go out there and win. Really. Okay, let's start about. Let's talk about this defense. Who are some of the guys that are tep stepping up into bigger roles this year? And what are some of the keys to you guys maintaining kind of a level of excellence on the defensive side this year? Um, I'm excited for to see DJ Allen work at defensive end. Um, he's really had a lot of growth over the summer. He's gotten quicker and stronger. I'm ready to see him play. Um, I'm ready to see Rylan Crawford at the safety position, really do some work out there on the field. And, um, I'm, yeah, I'm excited for, to see our linebackers work as a group and our defensive uh, line can really works together well. So, What do you think characterizes this defense? Is it speed? Is it aggressiveness? Is it uh, you know, knowledge? Like, wh wh What's really the trademark of this defense? Um, being aggressive, being the most physical team we can be out there, hit them first, really. Punch them in the mouth first and... That's, that's it. <laughs> what, what are you most looking forward to about this season? Because, you know, a couple of weeks ago we weren't sure we were going to have a season. It looks, things are looking good, trending in the right direction, as they say. So what are you most looking forward to about, you know, getting out there on a Friday night? Um, just to play. I've been waiting for, I've been waiting for my senior year. I just want to go out there Friday night and play and compete and give it all I got. Go on the field and just leave it all out on the field. And I'm, I'm hoping that's what our team does, just be aggressive, come out on the field and win. It's day three of official practice, but you, you've been with this team in years past, been with them in the offseason, conditioning, working out, all that good stuff. What is it that you like about this team that has you thinking positive thoughts as we enter a new year? It's just super supportive. Your teammates pick you up all the time. There's, I mean, no one's going to get down on you. They're going to just support you and keep you up. Uh, you're a defensive guy, first and foremost. So tell me about this defense. What characterizes this defense? What are some of the things you've noticed that's going to make this defense special on Friday nights? Our secondary is super fast. We're really speedy in the secondary, and then our middle linebackers fill holes tremendously well. So the uh, secondary doesn't have to worry about it, and our defensive line does, does a lot too. Just, you, got, 
yeah, yeah. you've got experience, but who are some of the guys that are going to be stepping into bigger roles? I mean, I know you graduated some talented guys last year. You know, uh, it was a Gavin James, yeah. uh, a number of guys that put up some GT Baker, mm -hmm. guys that were real productive for a number of years for you. So who are some of the guys that are going to fill those roles and are going to take, we're going to take notice of on Friday? Carson so, Eppner is stepping up for, uh, for Gavin, and he's, he's hit the weight room in the offseason. He's gotten really big. I think he'll do a really good job of filling in. And then uh, K. Mill and Ryland are uh, chasing to like different positions, and I think they'll fit in very well too. When you take a look at the last season, ten and two is a great record. Um, but I know you'd like to have two more wins in there yeah. against East Noble specifically. Um, so, how much does that fuel you, knowing that yeah, you had a great season, but you lost to the same team twice? It's gonna make us go even harder, especially like against everyone. We're gonna play our hardest every game. Make sure we don't do the same thing we did last year. In your eyes, what's the biggest key to having a successful season for Leo? Not let them score points on defense and score points on offense. Just keep it going on both sides and play the entire game with our like, everything. Good deal. Uh, what are you most looking forward to about this season? Um, obviously, as a senior, it's probably something you've been looking forward to for quite a long time. Nothing beats the excitement of Fridays. They're just too much fun to have. Like There's just nothing I would replace for them. Been out here for the first three days, just their confidence level um, from last year. Some of, the, some of the players, you know, sophomores and juniors last year, um, you can just tell they're they're a year older, you're you're more experienced, and their confidence level is um, is high, and, and they're looking good so far. Ten and two is, is obviously a great season, um, but the two losses were the same team in East Noble, and it was a lot closer the second time around in the postseason. Uh, how much does that fuel this team, knowing that you want to get to that next level, you want a, a conference championship, you want a sectional championship, and you know it was a rival team that kind of. Uh, kept you from achieving those goals last year. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it'll fuel us a little bit, but, um, you know, we know that uh, to, to be a conference championship team to, to, and, and to be a postseason team, we got to play like East Noble did last year. You know, they were a great team, um, you know, and, and they proved that all year long. And so we got a, we got a good hand look, our kids did, as, as to what we have to play like. Um, and, and, you know, we, we know that challenge um, will be there this year as well. So um, it'll fuel them and it'll, and, you, know, it'll you know, get their effort and their, you know, hopefully seniors will, will kind of fuel off that as well and um, be something that we can take advantage of. But, uh, you know, more than anything, it's, it's knowing, you know, what type of team you have to be and how you have to play. And, um, you know, even though, even though they're a rival team, um, you can learn a lot from a team that is state runner-up, you know. So that's that's what we're going to do. And every year is new. Every year is, you know, um, different in terms of players out there, obviously. And, um, you know, they know the, the effort and, and the attitude they have to have in order to make a, a conference championship run and a postseason run. Tell me about this defense because you graduate, you know, really productive high school football players and guys like G.T. Baker, uh, uh, Gavin James, guys that – had a lot of experience back there. What is it that sticks out to you about this defense, and who are some of the guys that are going to be looking to, um, you know, fill some of those holes on a Friday yeah. night? Uh, while we've lost some good players, um, I don't know if people realize that uh, at times we have six or seven sophomores on that defense last year who were playing, and who are all back, you know. And so when I talk about the confidence level that these guys have, well, six or seven sophomores play defense almost, you know, the entire year. You know, guys like DJ Allen, Landon Livingston, Rylan Crawford, um, mm -hmm. you know, Damian Gutekunst, Michael O'Brien, who, who will be seniors. Those guys were on the field. And so it is a really good um, kind of veteran group we have back. And we have to replace some good players, but we like what we see in some of the younger kids too. And some of the kids who, you know, frankly played JV last year, who, you know, worked, you know, in the off season and in July and look pretty good right now too. So we're real happy where the defensive unit is. Uh, tell me about this offense, because obviously Peyton Wall was kind of the centerpiece. He was one of the best players in Northeast Indiana last year. Um, but you do have returning pieces along the offensive line, and, you know, always good to have a, a quarterback with some experience. Right. There. Yeah, so kind of the same thing as I just talked about on defense. You know, we had a lot of young kids playing offensively, too. Now, obviously Peyton was, you know, very productive for us. And so, you know, we we don't know right now if we, you know, to replace that production in one person probably isn't going to happen, but we we have, you know, what we believe is a is a pretty good backfield in terms of what we see so far. Obviously, it's early, but um, you know, guys like Kane Miller and, and Logan Barnett and Carson Hepner all have, you know, some experience in varsity football, and and so you know, especially early on in this season, really through the entire season, I can see it being kind of a committee of 
of skilled kids at running back. And, um, you know, we are really pleased at how they're, how they're performing. You know, and like I said, it's, it's day three, so there's a lot that we still have to install and learn and get better at, but really impressed at just their, you know, right now how they're working and, and some of the leadership of the older guys and then just, um, you know, how they're, how they're gelling already as a unit is, is really encouraging. In your eyes, what's the one biggest key, if there is one, for, for Leo's season? Well, you know, I think, you know, if we're talking about just, you know, on, you know, basically on field, it's going to, you know, it's going to have to be up front with our offensive and defensive lines. You know, we, we have a pretty experienced group back on both sides, um, but they're going to have to perform, um, you know, with some of the bigger, the better skill kids that we had last year that we're replacing, um, you know, early on in the season, we're going to rely on those guys up, up front. And, uh, you know, we like what we see so far, but, that's going to be a big part of it. And then we always say this, and I will always say this, is how are your seniors going to lead? You know, um, you know what, what, what with the you know, off-field kind of in locker room type stuff. And, you know, as, as teammates, what, what, how will the seniors lead us uh, through this year? And that will be a big part of pulling everybody together, getting the young kids, making sure they're, you know, doing the right thing, you know, team character type thing. That'll, oh, that that'll, is important, will always be important. And so it's young yet. We don't, we, we don't quite know yet where that's at, but uh, – I think the senior group is a good one and, and will do a good job leading this team. Final question, what are you most looking forward to about this season? Because, you know, for the past couple of months, we've kind of been wondering, are, are they going to play? Things are trending in the right direction. What are you most looking forward to? Because um, I think sometimes when you know a season's going to happen, you can maybe take things for granted. I know that this has kind of been a wake-up for a lot of people not to take playing under the Friday Night Lights for granted. Yeah, you know, I just, I just think, to me, just playing, just getting, just getting out there, you know, it's, and, and also just being out here with, with the coaches and the players, you know, we spent an awful long time away from each other. Um, and you just, when we got out here in July, just, it was just refreshing, I think for everybody to get back together, you know, and even though we have, di- you know, social distancing, we're wearing masks and we're, we're together, you know, and that, that's big, that's big for not just the players, but it's big for the coaches, you know, interacting with the other coaches and then players and coaches and players and players. And so, you know, that, that has been, you know, just something we've been looking forward to. And then just, you know, being out here at practice and kind of, kind of getting back into a normal routine as much as we can uh, with all the guidelines. But just really looking forward to that and, you know, getting back to school and getting the kids back into school because you miss it, you know. Um, I know I did miss, miss the students, miss the players, the atmosphere of, of just the school. And so I think it's something that a lot of people will take for granted again.